Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. Today is the 29th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2021. And today I will be talking about the first nine days of the Biden administration. It seems longer, doesn't it, folks? But it's only been nine days. President Biden used his first nine days to establish his rule by decree. He rules by signing unconstitutional orders. Many, many of the orders, last count about 30 executive orders, as well as other actions designed to kill Trumpism, to stomp on its grave and reestablish the authority of the global establishment. I wonder whether President Biden has a presence of mind to know what he is actually signing today in the Castle family. As far as I know, there is no sickness, certainly no virus. We're very grateful for that as we try to take each day as it comes. When the grasshopper said to the master, Master, how can one remain peaceful when all around him is nothing but violence? The master replied that peace is not found in what is outside the man, but from what is inside the man in the castle family. We seek peace inside and outside. From the ancient words of the Bible, we try to internalize those words as best we can. Speaking of soldiers and razor wire, why does the National Guard, as well as some federal troops, still occupy the nation's capital? What is the answer? The only one I can think of is that all those middle American deplorables running around free, those are the people Democrats like to define as domestic terrorists, insurrectionists, religious fanatics, racist, and of course, white supremacists. Pictures of the Capitol as occupied territory may help bolster the image that Democrats are there to stay. The rest of us may as well get used to it. The second reason can be explained from the front page of yesterday's Memphis newspaper, the commercial appeal. The headlines on the front page said that each employee of the city and county government must be vetted to make sure that a person was not in Washington, D.C. on the 6th of January. In other words... The guard remains in the Capitol to help stifle any remaining dissent as these witches are hunted down, located. Perhaps the Democrats are having trouble stuffing the Black Lives Matter and Antifa genies back in the bottles they opened to aid Trump's undoing. Sometimes we become what we despise, it seems. For example, the Arab Spring color revolutions that started in Tunisia spread across the Middle East ended up costing the Saudi government $130 billion in social services payments to quell the anger of their own citizens when masses believed the election was stolen from them. The conclusion is that change can no longer occur by election, so their choices are limited. Why all the rage growing in Trump voters? The left explains the burning rage building in those disenfranchised Trump voters as a desire to protect white supremacy, not a belief that the election was stolen. I want to spend some of the time I have with you today talking about the first item on the new president's agenda. That item was, of course, the Keystone Pipeline. Why did he decide to cancel it? Because unlike the question of soldiers in Washington whose purpose is in doubt, the pipeline's purpose is obvious and easily understood. Mr. Biden, oh, excuse me, folks, Mr. Uh, President Biden has a long history of hating pipelines. He's hated pipelines for his entire 48 years of government service. And in November of 1973, as a junior senator from Delaware, he voted against building the Alaska pipeline, which was the big environmental issue of that day. Then, as the first act of his after inauguration, January of 2021, he revoked a permit to build a pipeline from Alberta, Canada, to the central U.S., the Keystone Pipeline. I have remained reasonably up to date on Keystone since it was a central issue in one of my 2016 debates. In those days, the criticism of the pipeline was that it would destroy the environment of Native American tribes. But as I pointed out, it was cleverly routed away from tribal land, so the argument held no water. The environment in general was the next point of objection. But 
The pipeline was routed with great care, was far less dangerous than the rolling stock railroad cars that would otherwise transport the oil, or at least that is how I frame my argument. Speaking of railroad cars, by a strange coincidence, Warren Buffett, who is a billionaire and a very large donor to the Biden campaign, owns much of the railroad rolling stock upon which that oil will be forced to travel should the pipeline be canceled. So once again, folks, nothing to see here. Just move along. There are currently over 200,000 miles of pipelines crisscrossing the United States. They carry oil, gas, and other products that produce energy. They run everywhere. They carry the products that fuel transportation, that heat and cool our homes, and enable manufacturing to function. More than 70 of these pipelines currently cross the borders of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Keystone was designed to carry crude oil from the western Canadian provinces across the edge of Montana, North Dakota, and Nebraska, then linking with existing pipelines in Missouri to transport this new volume of crude oil to the refineries on the U.S. Gulf Coast. Environmentally, Keystone is no more dangerous than any of our other entire network of pipelines. Diverting the oil to railroad transport will cost more money mean higher prices at the gas pump and across the whole supply chain. Some powerful groups are unhappy with the decision to cancel. These groups are screaming their heads off. The Native American tribes, who voted virtually 100% for Biden, wrote a letter to the president explaining to him that his decision to stop drilling on federal lands and to stop the pipeline would cost thousands of Native American jobs. The letter pointed out to him that tribal lands are not federal lands. They're not owned by the federal government. His authority over them does not exist, the chief said. Ordering drilling stopped on federal lands and canceling the pipeline are different issues, but they come from the same mindset. It is a mindset that wants to make America dependent again, dependent on foreign imports of oil. The Saudis will be happy to hear that because they know we will then be forced to send our sons and daughters to fight their wars once again. The fruits of the labor of American citizens can go back to Saudi Arabia once more to reduce their deficit at the expense of our own and to free up Saudi money to build palaces for their princes. Why don't more Americans grasp this fact? Why don't they understand that the government strong arms the free market constantly, always at grace cost to the nation and its people, for little of any benefit except to the political establishment? They usually have some high-sounding fake environmental argument to explain it all. The disregard for the interest of working Americans was one of the primary reasons for the rise of Trumpism. This gives the Democrats another chance to crush dissent and rub the losers' noses in the fact that they will never rise again. Even the very woke Pierre Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, said he was very disappointed in the president's decision. That statement, coming from one woke leader to another, is the equivalent of a woke nervous breakdown. Thousands of good-paying jobs on both sides of the border will go away, but I suppose President Biden can throw those people a few scraps in the form of some free money. The decision to cancel seems at first glance like a totally domestic decision, but it is a foreign policy decision as well. The destruction of America's drive for energy independence certainly will have far-reaching foreign policy implications. Biden critiqued Trump's America First policy during the campaign for two stated reasons. Mr. Biden must have realized the appeal of America First to working people, but America first, he, he reasoned. It's selfish. It ignores global issues such as climate change and women's rights that are threats to all humanity. The president is not only the leader of the United States, according to now President Biden, but the whole world. Secondly, Trump did not consult with his allies in his America first policy. That really upset the global establishment. Mr. Biden says, President Biden, I'm sorry, folks, I can't get used to that. So all hail Joe Biden, emperor of the world. Forgive his hypocrisy for a snap decision to cancel the Keystone Pipeline without even a phone call to longtime ally Canada. 
the mighty and most virtuous Emperor Biden will gladly assume his role of protector of the moral values of all humanity. Sounds a little like a combination of Bill Clinton, i.e., this is our world, you get used to it, and George W. Bush, i.e., we are the indispensable nation, we can do whatever we want. Now I return to the title of this report for a moment. Why all the soldiers in Washington, long after the inauguration is finished, his inaugural speech cloaked in unity, but it hit all the usual themes of racial resentment, identity politics, and blame. It spoke to me, as did the presence of the soldiers. Of a coming witch hunt that will remind some of my older listeners of the McCarthy era, when Joe McCarthy said he would find the communists in the State Department, he would root them out of Hollywood. That process was called blacklisting. When a person was blacklisted for something he said or wrote, that meant he was no longer employable. I remind you of Thursday's headlines of the Memphis paper as an example of the witch hunt going on today when someone out there in the Democrat world, fueled by social media, the mainstream media, and the Internet does the same thing Joe McCarthy did. They call it canceling or cancel culture. But in McCarthy's day, they called it blacklisting because it's the same thing, and it, blacklisting is a lot more honest term. There is a witch hunt going on now. It's getting worse by the day. If it doesn't presently exceed the excesses of McCarthy, it soon will. This war is being waged in the name of diversity and against domestic enemies, since the enemy is anyone. Who does not share the establishment view of everything? Real diversity. Real diversity is the last thing these phony warriors want. It seems that what this regime wants is to crush real diversity as represented by diversity of thought. Total power, total uniformity of thought are the ultimate goals with the centers defined as domestic enemies or terrorists, those who reject establishment ideology. Do so at their own risk. They risk being blacklisted as criminals, racist, terrorists, white supremacists, or if they are in politics, Russian agents. Here are just a few examples of the purging of thought, which is contrary to establishment positions. The administration is taking action to purge the government of insufficiently loyal people. My pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, permanently banned by Twitter because he supported Donald Trump. Super Bowl quarterback Tom Brady possibly to be blacklisted because he was and is friends with Donald Trump. A bill introduced in Congress to prohibit the publication of any book written by anyone who served in the Trump government. A bill called H.R. 1, For the People Act, that's the name of the bill, For the People Act would give Congress control over elections as opposed to the states. That bill, submitted by John Sarbanes of Baltimore, takes 800 pages to amend, at least symbolically, the Constitution by congressional vote. The For the People Act, they tell us, will prevent all those bad domestic enemies from ever gaining power again. This blacklisting, at least officially, is simply the victor's consolidating their gains to make those gains permanent, perhaps half the country, believes that the Democrats stole the election, so Democrats want to fan the flames of that resentment and that anger by resurrecting an obscure clause added to the 14th Amendment post-Civil War. That clause was designed to calm Northern fears that the Confederate officials might someday run for public office and once again control their own government. To the victor go the spoils, as they say. So the Union arranged things so they could control Southern governments essentially forever. The same clause is now being used to keep Trump from ever running for office again. Soon it will be anyone who befriended him, whoever played golf with him, or whoever said maybe he did at least one good thing. And all fans that embers of a burning rage played and felt by those who feel robbed and disenfranchised. Many other constitutional executive orders, I'm sorry, folks, it's been a long day already. Many other unconstitutional executive orders have already been signed, such as open borders, forcing the military to accept transsexuals, taxpayer money to fund abortions abroad, but that is all the atrocities we have time for today. Thank God for that, I guess. 
The long and short of it is this, folks, tolerance, unity. And if we would just open our souls, as President Biden said, all just meaningless and empty words from an empty suit. Finally, folks, government is coercion, force, brutality, and lies. To give you an example, upon being told that the cancellation of Keystone would cost thousands of good-paying jobs, John Kerry said, well, they can get jobs making solar panels. You see, John married Teresa Hines, or Teresa as he calls her, so he doesn't have to well steal on a pipeline somewhere or wait for his unemployment check. That crass, let them eat cake attitude is a civilization killer. Their interests reveal why they act as they do because, to quote an old Chinese proverb, where interest lies, honor dies. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, folks, this is Daryl Kesk. Thanks for listening.